So previously in this game, I was using something called a spatial grid to basically divide the map up into smaller cells so I can figure out all of the related entities that a player could potentially intersect with, right? So for example, as I'm walking around, I don't check if the player is going to collide with all of these thousands of trees. I just check the neighboring cells and maybe even one more uh, round of neighboring cells to figure out, do I collide with a tree or do I collide with these zombies and stuff? And so that allows you to have a bunch of entities in a map without it doing a ton of checks for collisions. But recently someone refactored my spatial grid to use something called a quad tree. And I think this is kind of important to kind of talk about if you're ever dealing with 2D spatial grids or 2D space. How do you partition all of your objects so that you can quickly and efficiently look them up later when needed? So we have a, a 2D map here, okay? Let's just say this is like 200 by 200 in terms of size. And what you do, if you want to implement a quad tree, you basically start with a data structure, which has a region. And what you do is you push in a new entity. Let's just say there's like a new zombie here. We'll say like this is point uh, 1020. This would go up here in this quad tree cell. So when your cell reaches a certain capacity, in our case, in our game, we have it set to four, but I'll just do two in my example. So if I were to push in another object, let's just say this is like uh, 190, uh, 20, which would be up here. What this is going to do is you reach a max capacity. So I'll say capacity of two per cell. Okay. And so if you reach that max capacity, when you about to add in a third object, let's just go ahead and put this at like 40, 190 down here. You're actually going to split your tree into four quadrants. Okay. This is where the quad comes into play. You split it up into four quadrants. And then you basically say, okay, well, instead of pushing this into the top level cell, I now have a, I now have four separate cells, right? There's four separate cells that live inside the top level cell. And I basically just need to look through, okay, like this one is zero, uh, 100. Let me just go ahead and put some like, uh, some labels here. So we kind of understand that they all have like different regions to them, right? Every segment or cell of this quadri has like a, a rectangle associated with it. And we know how to do bounding box intersections with rectangles, right? Right now, treat these entities as like just points or locations on this 2D space. But um, what we keep on doing is we keep pushing things in. So if, eventually, if you were to keep on adding stuff here, like let's say you did like a, a 195 over here, and then you pushed another one, which could be uh, 10, 110. So you notice how everything that is above 100 and below 200 in the y direction is going to get put in this quad and we're going to go ahead and split this again because we just added yet another entity which pushes us over that capacity limit okay so then you split up this cell and now you basically keep putting these things in whatever cells that are necessary so you might ask okay so what's the point of this like how does this help in any way whatsoever well what you can do is inside your game if you have a player that's running around let's just say this is our player we'll just go ahead and just make them um, green if you want to find all of the entities around this player you could basically just draw a box we want to find any entity that happens to intersect this rectangle or this shape you can also do circles if you want to i'm not going to dive into circle intersection here so if i wanted to get all the entities that potentially intersect this yellow box how do i do it well the quad tree really helps with performance now because what you could do is you say okay give me the cells that happen to intersect this box it's going to check all four and realize that nothing here, like you could have thousands or hundreds of entities over here, right? But because these quadrants over here don't intersect at all with this, you don't actually have to check any of the entities in that cell. Okay, so now you're just going to say, okay, I'm going to check this cell and this cell. So you kind of recursively dive into the tree and check, okay, this one intersects. So I need to check if the entity, which happens to only be two. We can only have two in this cell. If any of these two entities were to intersect this, then we add it to a list and keep track of it. Okay. Same thing with this. This rectangle is intersecting all four quadrants in this, this cell. And so we have to loop through every single rectangle here and say, hey, give me all the entities. Since this isn't split up, let's just go ahead and grab all two entities that might live in this cell. Check if it's intersecting with this rectangle. And if it is, we push it to a list. So in this case, at the end of this, we are going to find that there's only two things that happen to intersect this uh, rectangle. And from the surface look, if your game is small, you don't have many objects, this might not seem very efficient. So I went ahead and grabbed an example that has a little bit more entities from the quad tree on Wikipedia. And we're gonna kind of talk about it just one more time. So imagine this is the tree and this is your center point. 
and then we're going to have a center point here for your cells. And then you're also going to have a center point over here, and then you'll have a center point over here, and then you'll have a center point over here. Okay, these are just for like references so I can kind of explain this. So let's say the player is right here and I want to get all the relevant entities that are surrounding that player. Okay, so the naive approach would be loop through all thousands of your entities and just do like a, a region intersection. If the entity intersects with that small region, you'd add it to a list. Okay, obviously that's not efficient. So instead what we do, which I kind of explained, but I'm going to do it one more time so you understand, is that you have a region and you check these four major cells and say, hey, does this cell intersect that small region? And if it does, you can recursively dive in and you do the same with the other four cells that live in it. So you have this cell, you have this cell, you have this cell, and you have this cell. Okay, so if our region is like right here, we'd have to just basically check this cell. Right here, that's it. And then we continuously do that. So if the region was about this size, we'd only have to check these two cells. And then eventually it's gonna break down and only get to these two cells. And then eventually it's going to say, okay, we're going to break down and get this cell and all four of these cells. And it's going to return a list of all the entities. Now, I don't know what the uh, big O of this is. I'm guessing it's log of something because it just like kind of splits your, your spatial grid into smaller segments and it quickly finds the things that are relevant to your region that you're looking for. Okay. And asking ChatGPT, what is the big O complexity? It looks like it's log of N. Okay. If it's a balanced tree. Searching again is log of n if it's a balanced tree. So it kind of gives you a lot more performance where you can quickly find what you're looking for uh, just by kind of recursively diving to the trees. So I do want to kind of show some code of how this was implemented in our code base. Again, I didn't write this code. This is someone else who contributed to this. But you can see here we have a class quad tree. And what we do is we have some quadrants. So we have the northeast, northwest, southeast, and southwest. And we also have a Boolean in the track if this thing has been divided or not. We also have a capacity. So there's like a max capacity of four. In the example I did, I set it to two, but the, the point still remains the same, okay? So what we do is we make a new quad tree, and then we can start adding things to it. So now let's look at how we add stuff into it, right? Because there's really two things we need to talk about. How do you add and how do you query? When you're adding, again, you're going to give it a region or like a point, and it needs to figure out what quadrant it needs to add it to and also if it needs to split and subdivide and add it to a smaller quadrant so let's just go back to the smaller example because i think it's easier to talk about but if we were to add a new point like this one it's first going to check if the main region if it doesn't intersect this point like if i were to try to add a point over here this quad tree would just return false otherwise if i put it inside a region that does intersect we're going to go ahead and continue on so the next step is we need to check how many entities live in that region, right? So the capacity comes into play here. And we say if it has capacity, we go ahead and just push that region into the quad tree. So if we were to add something into here, this cell is already at max capacity, right? This thing has a bunch of things. So the top level cell is at full capacity. So now we have to recursively subdivide it if we need to. So it turns out that this won't ever run because we are already at max capacity. This whole cell here has like what, seven or eight different entities. So we basically check, okay, if we're at max capacity, do we now need to divide this thing? So we have like a subdivide method, which basically just creates four different quad trees, puts it in the north, east, south, east, et cetera, sets divided as true, and it changes the size of these regions in half, okay? And so once we subdivide it, if it needs to be subdivided, we then, recursively try to add it to all of the four quadrants because we need to figure out, okay, this thing definitely belongs in this whole cell, but this cell was subdivided. So we need to figure out which of these four cells or these, these child subtrees, which one does this belong to? Okay, so it turns out that all of these are gonna return false because these regions do not intersect with the entities region, but this one will intersect, okay? So we're gonna kind of recursively dive into Southeast or sorry, we're going to recursively dive in the southwest, and this one will return true. And if we kind of do that same method over and over again. We check, are we at max capacity, which happens to be two? A, are we already subdivided? We are, so let's go ahead and just check these four subregions and figure out, okay, where does this entity actually live? And it turns out that you end up getting to a recursive call that's going to add it to this subregion, and it's not going to subdivide it because it only has one thing in it, and you'll be done with the adding. All right, so that's the adding, but let's look at the, the query. This one's kind of interesting as well. So like I explained, 
you can query based on a region, right? So if I want to find the entities that live in a particular region like this, we are going to basically first check if the region intersects with the boundary. So if we're currently not intersecting with the boundary, we return early. So in our case, none of these regions, none of these cells are going to intersect with this. So we won't actually check these. This one intersects just by a little bit. So we're gonna check the Northwest and the Southwest, right? So we basically go down here and we say, if this thing's divided, we need to check all four quadrants. And again, there's like a return early statement here. So like some of these don't actually do anything, but the, the Southwest and the Northwest, these two are actually gonna return some type of entities. And so we keep on doing this process where now we're gonna check this cell, this cell, this cell, and this cell. And all four of these cells actually do intersect with this region. Same thing with this one. So if we can't subdivide it anymore, what we do is we just loop over the two entities or whatever capacity it is. We loop over it and just check, does this thing intersect with this region we're looking for? In this case, no. So we won't push that into an array. We check this one. Is this thing going to intersect with this region? No. So we don't push it in. But these two, these two end up intersecting with this search region that we're looking for. And we push it into an array, which is what we're doing here. We have like this, this set. We keep pushing things into that set. And then eventually, recursively, we're going to return that entire array or set of things we found to whatever's calling this dot query method, which happens to be called here in the spatial grid. So if I were to get all the entities that are in a certain range, I just call quadtree.query, I give it the range, and then we get back an array of everything that happens to live inside of that region that we're, sh we're searching for. All right, so that's about it. Um, I thought this was really cool uh, to learn about. Again, understanding data structures and efficient ways to kind of subdivide your data. Like that's the fundamental thing you're gonna learn in computer science. At a certain point, you have too much data, you have to figure out a way to partition it so you can quickly query for stuff. Like databases do something like this. I think they use something called a, um, a B tree where they take a data set and they divide it into different like segments. So understanding this is very, very important, um, especially if you're kind of starting off in terms of computer science. But if you wanna check out this code, go to my repo and just type in quad tree and you can read through it and kind of understand how it works. It's super simple. It looks kind of confusing at first, but if you understand recursion, it's like, okay, this is just another recursive function, right? So go check that out. I'll put a comment in the uh, video, but other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed. Have a good day. Happy coding.